Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Oh, it's it's one of those nice uh, rainy mornings when I'm I'm actually thankful that uh, it is now the end of October, and I know in the past sometimes at the end of October we've had like the 30 degree weather rather than 50 degree weather <laughs> first thing on a sunny morning, and so. I'm counting our blessings that the, uh, we had a, actually we had a nice ride over because the colors have now reached this area, which were further north, but now coming over the mountain, you can just imagine what it'd be like in the sunlight. Uh, but uh, at any rate, we, we have some rain, which I think is a blessing. Um, as opposed to the snow that we're expecting here shortly. Anyway, our call to worship this morning is found uh, on page 858 at the back of the hymnal. Uh, it is Psalm 146. And let's read this responsibly. Psalm 146, page 800. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God for all I have eaten. Put not your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Their direct departs, they return to the earth on that very day their homes perish. Happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, His who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps safe forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord acts. Uh, sorry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. And our goals are the widow and the orphan. For the Lord brings the way of the wicked to the Lord. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And let us say, praise the Lord. Now, our, our first hymn this morning, our hymn of praise, is number 408. 408. The Gift of Love. Now we stand if we're able. Stand if we're able.
Gracious Lord God, we, we thank you for all of the gifts that you give to us and continue to give to us each day in, in our lives. The blessings, the, all of the, the friendships, of the, the love that surrounds us, the beauty of your creation. But Lord, we come today with some concerns on our hearts, concerns for, for those who are recovering, those who have recently been diagnosed, those that, that continue to need your touch in their lives and, and working with the skillful hands of doctors that, that they, might, they might improve in health, in mind, and in body. We, we especially thank you for, for those children who, who have achieved successes, those who have, have found what is hard to find, and, and those who, who delight us so much in this life. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, who you sent into this world that we might be redeemed. And by his blood we are redeemed and can live eternally with you in heaven. And we pray all of this, therefore, in his holy name, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Now we're going to try another hymn. So this is 453, More to Love Thee, O Christ. And, and I'd like to add before that, my more love to be. Just let's just pause each of us to love our Lord God with all our hearts and minds and soul. Ah. I know that feeling well.
Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the book of Mark. We're going to be re reading uh, Mark 28, I'm sorry, Mark 12, 28 to 34. Mark 12, 28 to 34. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, What commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all those burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. May God add his, bless his blessing to this reading from his holy word. Commandments. Well, now we're all familiar with those uh, those Old Testament commandments, right? I mean, everybody follows those to the letter, after all, right? Um, I'm, I I particularly like that one about coveting what your neighbor has. You know, my goodness, they just got this man. That car looks really nice. I I wish I could have one of those. And, right? We oh, every once in a while, maybe we have to do something like that, or. I, I like the one, too, about uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. I've mentioned that several times before to you. Yes, that does happen in my life sometimes, frankly. Usually in traffic, but maybe other times as well. Uh, let's see. I, I remember as a child, of course, honoring my mother and father. Well, sometimes, you know, when I didn't get my own way, I had some trouble with that commandment. So we have all these Ten Commandments, and, and we really try to follow all of them, right? Very well. I mean, we, to the letter, right? Everybody nodding like, oh. <laughs> so now here's some new commandments, some commandments that Jesus is setting out and saying that they're even greater than those other ones. Oh, my goodness, the other ones are so hard to follow. Now we have two new ones. And, and the first is about loving our God. Now everybody here feels God's love surrounding us and we love our God, right? I mean, really. Well, let's, let's look at how Jesus described it, loving our God. And let's start out with, uh, let's start out with the mind. Okay, we, so we, we all know that we love God, right? We all we all have this thought and this logic that God loves us, so we love God. Do we think about that often? I see a couple of nods, at least. Well, maybe not as often as we might. But we should be loving our God with all our mind. So, in other words, when we think, we should have God in the thought process. We should consider God in all that we're doing when we're thinking about something. And so let's talk about the, the heart. Oh my goodness, the heart. Well, I like the heart because, uh, you know, being a John Wesley guy, uh, John Wesley's heart was strangely warmed by, by the idea that God has such an abiding love when Jesus comes to dwell in the heart. But to love God with all our hearts with all our emotion, with all those 
things that we associate. Now, hmm. so let's think of a love that we have in our lives. Think of a time now or in the past or, or perhaps in the future when there was this great love you had for something. And now I want you to compare that with the love that you have for your God. Have that same quickening of the pulse, that same feeling of, of joy and contentment and love. Oh, wait a minute. Loving God is different from human love? Hmm. Well, we won't talk about all the aspects there, but the point is, frankly, we should be in love with God in our hearts, in all that we do in our charity, and in our love for others. Now let's talk about, <clears throat> hmm, what was the other one? Oh, the strength. Well now, we all know how we gain strength, right? How do we gain strength? There's brain What's that? There's muscle strength, there's brain strength. Oh, there's muscle strength, there's brain strength, that's true. But, but the, for me, the best way to gain strength is through exercise. Everybody agrees, right? That, and, and how do we grow stronger in our love for, for God? It's to exercise our love. And, and that calls us to do something about that love rather than simply say, oh yes, I love my God. I, I am thinking about it. I'm feeling it. And now we have to do something. We have to demonstrate that love. And how do we demonstrate that love? Hmm. Well, I'll leave that up in the air for just a moment. Now let's talk about the soul. Oh, wow. What's the soul? Hmm. What's our soul? You looking at me for an answer for that? What? It's your essence. It's, it's that which God put into you which makes you alive. Which makes you live. That's your soul. And you see, so here is a part of God. God's animation of us demonstrates his love. And our love of life should demonstrate our love for our God. And so it's more than thinking or feeling, or exercising. It is our very essence to love God. In all that we do and everywhere we are. Now we mentioned before about that strength thing, and we come to the second part of what Jesus is telling us is the greatest commandment. Now that second part, everybody's familiar with that, right? Loving your neighbor as yourself, um, sometimes we refer to it as a golden rule. Uh, I'm not sure why we call it a golden rule. Does anybody have a definition for that for me? Hmm. Okay. We'll just call it the golden rule. But the point is that it is how we should live and how we can then demonstrate our strength of the love of God by touching others, by loving others. Now, I like to use, a, a lot of times, you may notice, I, I like to use the checkout lines at the grocery store for my discussions. And, and I'd like us to think about loving our neighbors. Now, there's lots of opportunities, you know, when you're in line at the grocery store to love our neighbors, right? Well, let's, let's think about it a little differently, though. There's two checkouts. Uh, and, and there's this one person at one checkout that, my goodness, they are so slow. You stand there, and they just do one item at a time, and then they try to put it in bags, and they can't bag properly or anything else. My goodness. Now, we have this other person that's highly efficient, and you go right through now, if you know that in a supermarket, what do you do normally? 
Hmm. I would speak more to soul. What's that? I would speak more to soul. So our college thing. You choose to look up. Ah, okay. Well, that's an experience that's exciting. Yeah. So, so if anybody wants to have the longest time at the checkout, all you need to do is follow Leslie. <laughs> she's, she's a leader in that. There you go. A leader in going slowly at the checkout. But the price we pay, we shouldn't have to drag our own groceries anyway. There you go. That's true <laughs> enough. But it's, it's the journey how you do it that's important. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's no place to pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I stop and I think to be patient through it all mm -hmm. is it's the journey that's important. If I'm standing in line and it's going really slowly, it's the journey of talking to the people that are near me. There you go. And making a difference there. We don't know if that person's had a bad day and we need to uplift them. The person in front of me I have to keep reminding me, I think that's not gotten bad news. Mm -hmm. And maybe he needs some. Prayer. Please go faster. I don't know. But I think, I think if we all just look at it as a journey instead of how fast we get there, right. how we get there, there you go. then we ourselves are going to be much more patient mm -hmm. when we're going through it. And, and as well, we're, we're going to have a lot less stress in our yeah. lives as well. But I'd like to talk a little bit about how sometimes what we do, however, is we see a line at the fast checkout and we see nobody at the slow checkout and we go back down the aisle and sort of look at other things and things to spend a little time and then we go and find the check that's fast. Right? And, well, actually what we're doing is we're kind of making a judgment here. Well, my time is important and so, wait a minute, we're going to waste some time in order to go more quickly. That's the way we are, though. Now, when we're talking about love, what we ought to be doing is looking at those two cashiers equally. Oh, my goodness, but they're not. Well, let's think about it for a moment. Maybe it's that this slower cashier has suffered from a thing called dyslexia for their entire life. And they're doing their utmost. They're going as fast as they can and doing everything as best they can. And how do we look at them? They're just a slow person at the checkout. And yet they're doing everything they can do to please us, to help us, to move us forward. And so we need to understand, to look beyond. Because so often, don't we look at people and, and we say, Oh, look at that person. My goodness, look at the way they're dressed. Or, or oh my goodness, they have dirt in their ears. Whatever it is, we kind of make that judgment, don't we? we and we, we say, oh, we really want to kind of stay away from that person. Or what they say. You know, we don't like being around people that are constantly taking the Lord's name in vain or something. And we judge them. Well, maybe there is something going on in there, just as Leslie said earlier, you know, maybe there's something going on in their lives that causes them to be that way. And part of loving our neighbor is, is taking away all of that judgment, all of those things that block us from being in love with our neighbors, taking them away. And looking at them as children of God, as they truly are. And looking, by the way, for the good in them, not looking at the negatives. Wow. And I subscribe to you that and there might be a few notable exceptions to this, but I subscribe to you that everybody has some great and good aspect to them. And what we ought to be doing is looking for that great and good aspect rather than trying to find things that are wrong with them. That's part of the love that Jesus is talking about. 
It's finding that peace within those others who surround us, who can lift us and touch us. If only we let them, if only we let love be the determining factor in our relationship with whomever we come in contact with. And so it's to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. My goodness, we love ourselves, don't we? Everybody loves themselves, right? Now really, uh, sometimes people tend to, well, but wait a minute, God loves you. And so why can't you love yourself? If you, if, if God created you in, in his image, if he put that soul within you, if he surrounds you with love, you are loved and you are lovely. So we should be loving ourselves, not to the point where, by the way, we, we think, oh, well, I'm, I'm much better than everybody else, or, or I deserve more than that person because God loved me. No, it's that we have to value ourselves. And sometimes the problem is we can love our neighbors as our, we love ourselves. And if we don't love ourselves, then how can we possibly love our neighbors? And so there's the thing. It's to love our God with our, our thoughts and our feelings and our strength and our soul. And by manifesting that and going forward and touching others in God's holy name, instilling the message of Jesus Christ in them and displaying in everything we do that love, that strength that God gives us through love. And so my brothers and sisters, let us go forward taking this commandment, loving the Lord our God and loving others, being at the forefront of our lives and ever remembering that love that God, that God just surrounds us with that love. And let that be our protecting halo, as it were, as we go forward. Can we do that? Let's be in love, shall we? Loving Lord God, we come to you today as, as your humble servants, wishing to do what you want us to do. Help us to love you more fully, to understand that love, to think about that love and feel that love and exercise that love and have that love as part of our very essence. And let us then touch others in your name, loving them and not judging them, finding the good and not the bad, and going forward as your disciples and loving in your holy name, shall we say, amen. amen. Now, oh my goodness, I did that without even consulting my notes. Shall we pray? Dear God in heaven, as we come to you today, we pray that you will open our hearts, open our minds, and open our lives to you. Help us to love others as we love ourselves, to love ourselves as much as you love us, and to love you with everything we have. We pray that as we go forward in this life, that we might be those sons and daughters that you so desire us to be. Those, those persons who, who are special to you. Your love pouring down upon each of us. And your knowledge of what we are and who we are and, and what we're going to do strengthens us and helps us to be 
living in your will in our life. And we pray especially that we might accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior is coming into our hearts and having that direct pipeline with Him and knowing that He is the way and the truth and the life. And as we continue our service, let us continue it with saying those words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father. Please let us stand if we're able and participate fully in this our final day.
great God of peace and understanding be with us all until we're again together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And go in peace.